This little short video will attempt to educate you and shed some light on why I believe BMW drive shafts fail at such a high rate relative to all other manufacturers. First, it's important to dispel the myth that drive shafts are somehow weak. For years, the Japanese and other manufacturers have used them on motorcycles, which are way over 100 horsepower, and yet you don't have failures. The famous VMAX, the current Kawasaki Concourse 14, very powerful bikes, no failures. It's difficult to understand why BMW has so many drive shaft failures. They've been making drive shaft motorcycles since about 1923. Currently, up in 2009, some of the latest models, the drive shaft has had problems in the final drive unit actually separating. It's had problems with the bearing. They've redesigned it. Continues to have a lot of problems. Most manufacturers use drive shafts, and they don't have any problems whatsoever. Why BMW can't get it right is a big mystery. Now the older generation before my bike, the clutch and transmission input shaft would have an alignment issue. And again, this can arise out of using a dry clutch. Most manufacturers don't use it. They use a wet clutch and this completely eliminates lubrication and alignment issues of the clutch and the spline that it attaches to. Now the K75 and K100 both have a dry clutch and that clutch could be misaligned either at the factory or if the clutch is replaced. But assuming that isn't the case, the majority of the failures happen primarily for lubrication reasons. All the rest of the clutch and driveline, drive shaft, final drive are all basically fine as far as the way they work. It's just a lack of lubrication. Hopefully BMW continues in the direction of going to liquid cooled like in the K1200S, they've gone to a wet clutch. In my case, the clutch failed at 35,000 miles. It cost over $1,000 in 2002 to have it replaced. I don't really see any purpose to it. Uh, with the wet clutch, you're looking at an hour or two to change it yourself, about $70 or $80 in parts. If you pay someone, you're looking at just a few hundred dollars. Much easier to do. Not a big deal. Go with a wet clutch. Engine. You got a three cylinder engine. This is the front of the bike. Then you have a shaft coming through here. This is the main output shaft. You have a rear main seal. You've got a dry clutch, meaning it's like a car type of clutch. You've got your second spline, that's your transmission input shaft. If it's not lubed, causes the classic telltale signs, which are you have trouble shifting. Mainly, I found you have trouble downshifting. You get to about 35 or 30 miles an hour or less and you're in fifth gear, you have trouble going down to lower gears. And you may have to blip the throttle and neutral, that kind of thing. Once I lubricated that part, I found that even at speeds as low as 5 miles an hour, I could pull the clutch in and go from fifth all the way down to first gear with no problem. This runs dry, like in the case of my bike. It doesn't actually cause any real wear. The only thing that's going on is the clutch slides here. So when you disengage the clutch, it slides slightly on this. And when it can't slide freely, that's when you get uh, uh, rough engagement. You let your hand off the clutch and it kind of engages suddenly. You may even hear a little bit of a clank. Output shaft on the transmission. At this point is where the drive shaft mates up with it. So here's a male shaft. This has grease on it also, but because there isn't much going on, Apparently, the grease doesn't seem to have a problem, even if it gets dry, really nowhere seems to take place at all. My drive shaft was completely worn out at this end, but at this end, there was almost nowhere at all. Then you have a universal. Sometimes it's called a carton joint. Now, I didn't draw it too well there, but it looks not unlike a socket. Now, here you have a problem is when these turn, and it's not quite like this, this and this would share a single pin, more like that. But anyways, when these rotate, the action and uh, velocity is not constant. You can get some vibration as a result. This is the main problem end. This is not soaking in gear oil. It's dry. There is a covering over it. And all we have grease here. You've got a, a female joint here on the drive shaft and male on the final drive. Now, what happens at this spline is it gets dry and also these are not bolted together this is actually able to slide so you got your your drive shaft going on to your final drive and the two are actually a little bit of sliding takes place this happens as you hit bumps and things like that 
here is BMW apparently used grease that was of low quality. With the passage of time, even if the bike isn't ridden, the, dry, the grease dries out, it gets hard, it gets flung off the shaft. The shaft then actually rusts, as in my case. What happens is there aren't any real signs of it. The bike seems to work properly, unlike here where you have a shifting problem. And wear slowly occurs over time because you have metal-to-metal -metal contact and no lubrication. Eventually, you get no traction. The drive shaft will twist and will not turn the final drive. And that's where you have a drive failure. So again, it isn't because the drive shaft is weak or someone didn't operate the bike properly, simply had a lack of lubrication. I believe if you use a top quality grease like Honda Molly 60, which is 60% molybdenum disulfite, as opposed to many engine, the engine greases that you get in a car, you can get grease with Molly. It only has about 3% Molly. And Molly is an excellent lubricant, You're resistant to moisture and being flung off. When it breaks, you have three options. One, you replace the final drive unit at a cost in 2009 of about $1,000, plus $260 for a new drive shaft. Option two is you have this repaired. And the main way of repairing it, one, people cut off this stub here on the final drive. They cut the spline off, they weld a new one on, matching everything up and smoothing out the weld bumps. That's pretty good, but one downside supposedly the weld can break. And also, it has to be put on perfectly straight. Another option is uh, at Hanson's BMW in Oregon, they have a program where they apply metal using a welder, and they apply that onto the splines. They then use a spline machine, which goes like this and cuts new splines. Car manufacturers or car repair facilities can also re-spline a shaft, but what I found is they don't have the special fixture to hold the final drive, and when you tell them it's a motorcycle, they won't touch it. What Hanson's requires you to do is to buy a new drive shaft because these two parts tend to wear together. They give you a discount, which is $200 instead of $260 for the drive shaft. They are a BMW dealer. They then, I think, have a program where they can rebuild your, uh, put new seals in. In my case, and most people's cases, this seal will leak here and gear oil will get in here. Ironically, it didn't get on the shaft, so it wasn't able to lubricate it. So it was still rusty, even though there was some uh, gear oil here. So they have a program where they'll put new seals in and check your final drive and make sure it's okay. Sell you a drive shaft. The whole thing with shipping runs about 550 and that you ship it to them, then they pay for the shipping back to you. So maybe $600 total. It's better than buying a new one, where a new one plus a drive shaft is about $1,200 or $1,300. Now we move on to Japanese, or really most other manufacturers set up. What they do is, instead of having a dry clutch, they have a wet clutch. That means you've got your engine, you've got your transmission, all one unit. What you have is you don't have a rear main seal to leak. You only have a single point here where the shaft comes out of the transmission case. Then what happens is you have a coupler, which would be something like just this part here. So this is what comes out of the engine, a shaft, and then this. The drive shaft then has a spline here, which has a little bit of grease on it, bricated, and there is actually a boot here. So you can add grease to it. Now we move back to the final drive, and here's the big secret difference. You have a spline back here, but it doesn't wear out. And the reason is it is moved back into here. It actually soaks in the gear oil. So the gear oil is what lubricates it. Right here you have a seal to keep the gear oil in. So the key difference is what BMW did is they took this spline and said, hey, let's move this forward. To my knowledge, there's no advantage to doing that. But by moving it forward, it now isn't soaking in lubrication. It now requires grease. They didn't put a grease fitting on there. The only way to put grease on it is to disassemble it. 5,000 or more than that on the bike and you never have to do anything. No taking the bike apart, no clutch spline loops. Apparently BMW has finally gone to the system in their latest bike, I think it's the K1200S, where it's got a four-cylinder engine, it's gone back to a wet clutch, and it's uh, they've actually sealed the back end so you don't change the, uh, the uh, gear oil at all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, take care of your splines if you've got a BMW, and happy trails.